a lot of the work I've been doing recently, especially when you think about educating public and others, is because I believe that we can actually dictate how we want this coexistence to work. Join me in welcoming Rafi Krikorian. He is the Chief Technology Officer and Managing Director at Emerson Collective. Um, Rafi was before that actually also leading um, sales driving efforts at Uber. I think um, you were responsible for the launch of the first ever sales driving Uber fleet. And uh, you've also been uh, leading a 500 person global team at Twitter, where you were in charge of the platform. So I'm very, very interested about this conversation now because uh, uh, you have been exposed at the cutting edge uh, AI, basically. Um, and I see you're also very passionate about educating people about the nuances of technology. Absolutely. So let me start with this easy question, very easy question. The okay. easiest question of all, what is our relationship to technology? I mean, like we have like a symbiotic one, right? Like. You know, I used to say, like at last year, if you asked me, I would mention this word coexist a lot, which people sort of gave me strange eyes when they look at it. But like, that's, that's really what we've been doing forever at this point, right? Like we coexist with this type of stuff. Like people ask me about how we're going to deal with AI emerging into our society as one example. And then I remind them we've been living with AI for a while in our society, like Think about your Netflix recommendations or Siri on your phone and all this stuff. Like when we, AI has been around for a while now. Um, but when it comes to technology, especially, it's just like we can't imagine a society that wasn't technologically powered at this point. And that also goes back a long time, like whether it be cars or steam engines or a telegraph, like all these things. So that's, that's sort of like where my mind comes to. It's just like this coexistence sort of like mentality. But how much influence do we have on it, right? Because, I mean, there are three schools, right? One could say uh, it's a autonomous and a determinate force, and we have, like, zero influence on what's happening, right? Like Eliel or Heidegger and so on. And then we could think the opposite, right, um, which uh, the European Union agreed on in their own declaration, that it, technology is a product of human shape by human value, so we can change basically anything. Or you could have... This, uh, this approach of uh, Van der Poel, for example, says that um, it is a co-evolution. So there are points in time where we have a huge influence, but then, you know, there are other points where we have almost no influence. Like, where would you put yourself in this spectrum? I'm a very optimistic person. And so, like, a lot of the work I've been doing recently, especially when you think about educating public and others, is because I believe that we can actually dictate how we want this coexistence to work. Like, I feel that right now, why are we in a place where people feel like they can't control it? Or why do people feel like they're in a place where these type of things are inevitable? I fundamentally believe it's because we sort of like both given up our, we've given up responsibility to understand how these technologies work. And we found ourselves in a place where we've gotten like blasé and just don't care. I mean, like, let me just give you a few examples, right? Like, you, you go to a website every single day, a new app every single day, and those apps put up a privacy policy in front of you. The vast majority of people do not read these things. Or a GDPR pop-up shows up to tell you about cookies. The vast majority of people don't read these things. At those points, you're effectively abdicating control. Like you're basically giving away all your responsibility or your ability to have responsibility and control about what's going on. You're giving away your ability to send a market signal of like what's actually important to consumers. You've given away all these things. So when people say that like technology is not able to be controlled, I'm going to go back and say, we've just given up our chance to control it. We can still get that chance back. Like we can still absolutely get that chance back. Like right now, you know, my, my mother-in-law, for example, she understands why we don't change speed limits on highways. She understands that because they're there. They're a safety mechanism. If you go too fast around a turn, you might literally fall off the highway. Your reaction time, she viscerally gets all that. But does she understand what the pros and cons are of having a video doorbell? Does she understand the pros and cons of using, say, an iOS device versus an Android device? Which she doesn't. And in fact, she's abdicated that. She'll just ask me or she'll be like, well, I bought 
Apple devices all the all my life. I'm just going to keep on buying Apple devices. So we've given up our ability to control these things. We've given up our ability to send signals back to the creators of these technologies. So I say, you know, I'm not sure I believe in any one of those three, except maybe if I had to really choose, it's probably the second one that we can control it, but it requires us to be curious. It requires us to be inquisitive. It requires us not to simply go along with some marketing jargon and decide to go and try and buy and use a piece of technology. It really requires us to be like deeply introspective on what this coexistence relationship should be. Just to play the devil's advocate there, uh, that in, uh, you're absolutely right. But then again, evolutionary, it takes us lots of energy to think about these things in a deep way, right? So most of the time, we're actually an autopilot, right? Like 10,000 decisions every day are being done. The vast majority of it, you're not even aware of that you're doing, right? And then you have these companies. Th these companies are like literally playing on them, right? I mean, they're reverse yep. engineering humans, right? Like That's right. They have Facebook, they have Facebook and even Twitter and, and so on. This is all engineered, right? It's not by chance. So I mean, it's like... It is so addictive because they just play into variable reward. They play into all these things purposefully. Yep. So, so they try to hack us and then, you know, when they succeed, of course, it's also our fault, but then you can also ask like, yeah, you can't blame, you can't blame the victim. Like that's not, that's not an appropriate thing to do. But at the same time, I would say that, yes, these are all true statements. Decision fatigue is a real thing. People don't necessarily need to, but like, there is a, there, you know, we have a notion to try to solve this right now. It's called the democratic process as well. And I feel like our government, at least here in the U.S., has also abdicated a whole bunch of control. Like they've also given up a bunch of things allowing technology companies. And look, technology companies do a lot of great things for all of us. But you have to remember that at least here in the United States, they're dictated by financial incentives. Like that's fundamentally how a corporation is set up here in the U.S. And the role of a government could be to introduce other forms of incentives onto this conversation, societal incentives, privacy incentives, all these things. In fact, some of these incentives might already exist in, in our U.S. Constitution. They just might not be employed properly. And so like the government has also been abdicating a bunch of things. So if you were to think about a three a three legged stool where there's like the developers of these technologies, you have the consumers who use these technologies, and you have the government who potentially could be regulating or adding other incentives. Both consumers and government have sort of like fallen off on our responsibilities. And so one way to solve this, if we can't push it to the end users, is for government to sort of step up. And at least in the U.S., they're trying. They're at least making noise about it. We haven't gotten very far, but at least they're starting to make noise about it. So that's, that's kind of step one, at least.